Hey guys, this is my review of the Lord of Corn on Juggernaut from Warhammer Age of Sigmar. I tried to find out as much as I could about this model before I bought it and it really turned out to be pretty hard to find any sort of info about it, so now that I have my own I thought I'd, you know, make my own little contribution to alleviating this problem. So we're going to unbox it, I'm going to test the parts fit, and then we're going to take a look at what it looks like all put together. So the model comes in uh, one of these generic uh, Games Workshop boxes that uh, I'm sure if you're watching this video you've probably seen more of these than I have. Uh, so we don't need to take a look at that. Instead let's just open this up, uh, see what we got in here. Um, the parts come in a blister. <clears throat> which uh, I am now going to attempt to open. <laughs> um, uh, here we go. Okay, it's not taped shut or anything. Got a same size base as the uh, Skull Crushers, obviously. And then we have one, two, three, five sprues. Okay. Now, of course, this is fine cast, so uh, there's about 5 million injection gates on everything. But uh, let's just go through these parts here. First of all, we have the um, uh, torso, uh, including one hind leg of uh, the juggernaut that the Lord sits on. Not too bad in terms of injection gates here. There's just a few... Um, Taking a closer look here to see if there's any problems. This looks a bit iffy. <clears throat> this is where the head's going to mount anyway. These are going to be very much in plain sight, so that sucks. Uh, the good news is I'm really not seeing any flash. Something going on with the tail here. But um, <clears throat> no flash and no air bubbles. Uh, just a lot of these injection gates. Here we have the rest of the legs. Um, this one in classic fine cast fashion has an injection gate every two millimeters. Um, the other two are a bit less extreme, which is weird because they're bigger and more detailed. Again, not seeing anything I would necessarily call a mold imperfection. There's this here, which is a bit fishy. Otherwise, um, also there's, you know, the mold line here is practically non-existent, so that's pretty nice. <clears throat> Next we have uh, the Juggernaut's collar. We have two heads. One with like this sort of blood warrior type head. This is the one that you've seen on uh, pictures, of course, um, on the Games Workshop website. But to my surprise, it also comes with this demonic head here, which looks really cool, actually. Does have air bubbles, though, here. <clears throat> Also here, a bunch of mold imperfections. I mean, you can get these. You can get rid of these pretty easily. It shouldn't be a problem, but it does have them. Um, then we have no less than six spikes with skulls mounted on them. They look well. They don't look like they're warped, so I guess that's good. <clears throat> and this is, excuse me, this is. Uh, I don't know what this is. Weird. Looks like, well, it's fur, so it doesn't go on the juggernaut. Right, here we have the torso of, actually the entire body, basically, um, of the Lord himself <clears throat> with a million injection gates. However, the good news is they're basically all on the feet, so uh, it's not going to be much of a problem. I mean, even if, even if you know, you don't do a super clean job getting rid of these, which this one, <laughs> this one's basically like the entire surface area of the foot. Um, won't be too much of a problem to get rid of these. I am not seeing any air 
bubbles, but we'll talk air bubbles again when I do the parts fit later. Um, I don't know if this, I'm wondering if this, I mean, this has to be part of the, like the, the cape somehow. Here's the head of the juggernaut where, oh man, yeah, you see this? No, you don't. Let me turn this around so you can see it. You see here between the juggernaut's teeth, there's a chunk of resin caught here. It should be possible to cut that out with a very sharp blade, but this is the sort of shit that I really hate about fine cast. I had a similar problem with uh, with a Skaven miniature that I built recently. Um, this horn is warped and has flash on it. <sighs> so here, this is another like chunk of resin here that's basically filling up a corner of the head. Yeah, and I don't know what's going on with this neck here. Some of this is meant to be here, other things aren't. Great. The heads of the Juggernaut are, and are only the coolest thing about them, and this is the piece with the most problems. Anyway, here we have the arm holding the axe, which looks okay, just a lot of injection gates. The shield also looks, let's say, acceptable. It's a bit bit rough on the back here, but I mean, you're not going to see that anyway, so who cares? And this is, uh, I don't know what this is, shoulder plate, probably, looks like a pauldron, um, something that goes on the Lord, I guess. Um, yeah, and that's it. So, <clears throat> In conclusion, I have a sore throat and I shouldn't be filming a YouTube video. No, in conclusion, five sprues, mostly okay. The only thing I'm really concerned about is how I'm going to get the the, the, the the superfluous resin out of the juggernaut's mouth. Um, the rest of it is good. Um, I'm considering now, of course, what which one of these heads I should use. Uh, and I may very well, well, I'll probably use the helmeted one and then keep this one for one of my other skull crushers or something. It's gonna make like a really nice skull hunter actually. Um, yeah, that's it. Fine cast, I guess. I mean, it's okay for a fine cast model, but it's still a fine cast model. So I'm gonna get these parts cleaned up soon, uh, and then uh, we're gonna check out what parts fit is like. I'm not necessarily seeing any joints that particularly concern me, but uh, let's wait and see. It's fine cast, so I'm sure it'll be full of surprises. Okay. Oh my God, you guys. Like, all the curse words. All the curse words, man. This... Oh, like I said, all the curse words. Anyway, I uh, where are we? Um, I've finished trimming uh, these parts. Uh, and by trimming, I mean desperately attempting to make them look semi-presentable. Um, and, uh, well, uh, let's talk about that a bit. Let's just say I've figured out why basically everyone online tells you not to buy this kit and just kit bash your own jugger lord instead because oh okay uh, well okay fine let, let you know let's 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 start with this let's start with this um if you look closely the red stuff here is actually where um the the sanding stick has scraped off. Um, here's here's the first problem. You can still see some of this. Uh, like I've seen on other fine cast stuff, when you have 90 degree angles like you have here between these various like layers of armor on the juggernaut's neck, sometimes they're filled in with like triangular pieces of um, resin. And this you find this, I swear, like all over this model. It's everywhere. It's here. It's, and I'll show you a few other places where it happened. I mean, it's, it really, it feels like, it feels like I'm carving this damn thing out of, out of a, just a block of resin. You know, I might as well be wood carving my own goddamn model. Anyway, uh, here's one of the legs. Um, the top here looks quite nice now. This was basically all connective um, resin pieces. Oh, and I just noticed another thing that I haven't... You see this? You see this? 
there's a little bit of resin here between the between the um the leg armor and uh the um the chain mail um yeah there's <laughs> i guess i'm still gonna have to fix that uh but things like this are everywhere there is so much of it there's so much of it that you're inevitably going to miss stuff. Like every time I look at these parts again, I find something else that I missed. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not at all surprised that I found this now as I'm attempting to do this video. And there's probably going to be more of it. Anyway, the leg connects here like that. And I will grant that the parts fit is okay. Um, this, I mean, there's a bit of a gap here that you may or may not want to putty, but it's not that big of a deal. It fits very well here at the top where it's actually visible. So that's okay. Um, here's the other front leg as uh, also very easily identifiable because for some reason it connects in a totally different way. Uh, this also fits very well. Um, it, you can wiggle it up and down a little. But you can also you can feel where the where the pieces connect, so super gluing this shouldn't be a problem. Um, yeah, I also I have to say like in those in those areas where not, where you're not basically resin carving, uh, the detail is very sharp. Just you know running my finger over this, I can feel, and you can hopefully also see in the video that the, the detail is very sharp. Uh, this also like on the other like the top here, this is basically all me. Uh, I had to sand cut. It looks more or less smooth now, uh, or as smooth as I'm gonna get it. Uh, this leg is attached to this, um, as um, you probably remember from the unboxing, which for you was like two minutes ago. For me, it's more like a week. Uh, so hind leg also parts fit. Um, if you move it up like this, parts fit is okay. Um, looks fine. Um, the head is a bit more of a problem. Um, first of all, let's just talk parts fit first. You've got these two pegs here. It slots in here and you can see it basically doesn't fit. Um, if you look here, there's a, see here's where the parts connect. There's a giant gap and you can basically attach it either this way or that way. It's kind of ridiculous. However, uh, the collar, um, there are these triangular uh, grooves here that this fits into more or less. I mean, if you can glue this in place, it's fine. If you attach the collar, it kind of, it kind of covers this up. Uh, looking at this now, I think I am gonna, I'm gonna glue it like this, and then I'm gonna have to putty this gap here. This is a train wreck, basically. Um, although in the kit's defense, I may have, I mean, you, you can see here how bumpy this is. Like you have no idea how much you're supposed to cut away, and then you just do kind of cut and sand, and then suddenly you realize you cut away too much. Uh, I may also still try. Uh, making these pecs a little smaller, but I mean, you can see it sort of wiggles back and forth like this. So obviously the problem is just that these surfaces don't match. It's not the size of the pegs. Uh, anyway, that's that's the juggernaut. Uh, legs fit fine, head not so much. Now, the other thing I want to tell you guys about this head is, uh, you may remember, uh, I think I mentioned it in the unboxing, there's a resin piece literally between these teeth here. So. The front teeth are basically, that's basically I carved these out of just a junk of resin and sort of a rough indication of where they're supposed to go. Uh, the spikes on the head look more or less straight. Now, these were completely warped. I had to heat this up, I had to straighten them. Um, <clears throat> speaking of heads, though, the worst offender, and this is what really bugs me, the worst offender is the actual the actual Lord's head itself because let me show you this up close because this is a really small piece. First of all, um, you can see that the top bleh, where's the camera? <laughs> the top looks sort of crooked. This is already after I've sanded this to be at least reasonably sort of parallel and and, and horizontal in between the top of its crest or whatever you would call that with the skull here and the bottom helmet there were three count them three connecting pieces of resin here that i had to cut out and if you look closely you can see the helmet has this ridge that is supposed to go up from the top over the top and back down here and it's basically gone here because i accidentally cut it away when i was getting rid of the superfluous uh, resin in between there. And if you look at the picture, 
on the Games Workshop website, there are actually supposed to be spikes here, but th th this is just filled up with resin. I cut it away, this is what it looks like. If there are supposed to be spikes, I don't know, I guess I'm supposed to sculpt them myself, I have no idea. It's ridiculous, and this is such a cool looking head otherwise. You can see it's hand sculpted, it's not entirely symmetrical, but it's got character, you know? So it's really just the crappy molding job, which is, that's the thing I actually mean to say about it. This is a really cool looking model, but Jesus Christ. Anyway, uh, the torso um, is actually okay. Um, there are very few, like most of, most of the stuff you have to cut away is actually on the soles of the feet, where I feel like it doesn't really matter. This looks a bit messy now, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I, I did try to sand a bit here, but I'm really concerned about losing detail elsewhere. <clears throat> the arms um, attach, wait, this is uh, on this side, right? It's kind of not entirely clear where the arm is supposed to go. I think the official studio build has it like this. Uh, I had to cut away a little here to make it fit snugly, but now it looks okay. So this is good. Uh, the shield arm also fits on here just fine. Of course, this is a smart place for the connection to be because there's supposed to be a gap in the armor here anyway. So, I mean, you can see there's a gap, but it's meant to be there. So not an issue. Um, <clears throat> the, um, yeah, the, the next problem here though is the head because if you, I mean, it's according to the studio build, it's supposed to attach sort of turned sideways like this, but I'm honestly not entirely convinced it's, it's even making contact in here and if it's not the glue is not going to stick so i may have to fill this up with putty but uh looking at this at the moment i'm probably i'm probably going to paint the head separately i'm not entirely convinced of that yet because there's not that much you can't reach but um uh, i may just keep it separate because i might as well because i'm definitely i mean the shield arm the shield arm I'm definitely going to paint separately because I want to be able to get to the inside of the shield and more importantly to there's this sheath here with an arrow symbol and of course the fur uh, from his cloak and all of this detail um, that's going to be really difficult to get to when I um, if when the shields attached so I'm probably going to paint that separate also by the way I just noticed another one of them resin triangles you see here this uh get this in focus this right here between the cloak and the knee i'm gonna have to get rid of that and like i said there was like two dozen of these all over this model i know i don't know i didn't keep count but it's ridiculous this piece that i thought was a pauldron is actually the bottom of the saddle the top of the saddle is molded into the into the uh the rider this uh Shockingly enough, is actually a very good fit. Um, so this just gets glued on here. Um, not so uh, thrillingly though. I'm here on the back of the juggernaut. It just, I mean, it has these ribs. I, I, I don't know. I, maybe it's supposed to be here, but you can see you can wiggle it back and forth. Um, I honestly. I'm, I'm not, or maybe here, <laughs> I think it's supposed to go like right up to this hump here, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm really not sure. Uh, it's just somehow, somewhere supposed to go on here. <clears throat> Hopefully the glue will keep it in place. Um, finally, um, and maybe kind of worst of all, we have these uh, spikes with the skulls on them. Um, that are, I mean, two of them are, are supposed to go in these holes on the legs. Uh, that, of course, is fine. Uh, but then there's three uh, like these um, that go on the back. And now, to be perfectly honest, you can see here that I had to cut and sand on the back of the, the juggernaut here. And here's where these spikes are supposed to go. And I mean, they're, it's just... It, the way it looks now, this just doesn't, it's not going to stick and it's not going to fit. And because this is a, this is a curved surface, <laughs> these are straight. There's going to be very little contact area for the super glue to grip onto here. So I'm just going to have to attach these with Millie Putt. There's no other way to do this. What I was going to say about me having sand at this though, is that it is possible that the reason the surface looked fishy was because it was sort of designed to, 
uh, for these to connect to it properly. I'm actually not sure. I, that may be my mistake. But uh, to be honest, the, the plastic juggernauts have the exact same problem. If you build the Skull Hunter and the Skull Crusher set, uh, you're also you're meant to attach spikes with heads on the on the back of the uh, juggernaut, and they don't stick. I've I've tried it twice now. I just I can't get them to stick. It's impossible. Whoa, <laughs> excuse me. Um, last thing, uh, last thing I meant to show you. Just in case you buy this kit, you might may be wondering. There's this part here as well that I assumed was part of the fur coat. It's actually not. Uh, it's supposed to go on the base. Uh, next to like one of the hoofs and it's supposed to look like it's, I don't know, like the, the ground is on fire because the hoofs are scratching or something. Um, and uh, the only way I was possible to uh, find this, uh, the only way I was able, I was possible, the only way I was able to find this information is I posted about it on uh, a uh, Blades of Corn Facebook group. Uh, shout out to those guys. Uh, and someone on there was able to tell me and he had the information from an old issue of White Dwarf. That's where how you find out what this part does because the actual uh, studio model on the Games Workshop website doesn't use this part. So <laughs> yeah, uh, you can see I'm, I'm really in love with this thing. Um, I will say though, um, I'll save these comments for the final review. I will say though that molding issues notwithstanding, this is a really nice sculpt. I just I I just wish it was better quality. Because the sculpt itself, the design is I love it. I, I really do. It looks just as cool as I thought it would when I the the million times that I looked at it on the games workshop website until I finally caved and bought one. Um it's a really, really cool model, but it's it's an absolute nightmare to work with. I'm I'm kind of kind of actually looking forward to painting it now not because I expect the experience to be particularly enjoyable but because I really want to see what it looks like and what I can do with it because there's a lot of really tiny detail here and I'm a little concerned about that but we'll see. Uh anyway, yeah, I'm going to get this guy glued together and then we're going to take a final look at it. Well, and here we are. The good news first, getting the three spikes with the skulls on them glued onto the juggernaut's back actually turned out to be pretty easy. Other than that though, who oh boy. The legs don't make contact with the torso piece nearly as well as I thought. I basically had to fill those holes you saw up completely with super glue, almost using it like putty. And the gap in the neck, as you can see, is basically unfixable. I don't really see how I'm going to get close enough with any sort of tool to fill this up with putty and more importantly than sand it so that it at least doesn't look worse than the gap that's already there, so I'm probably just going to leave this alone. Also, here's a closer look at the head to show you the problem with the part that I basically sliced off by accident. It's really completely gone. I think I'm just going to paint a line here and see if that's enough to create the illusion that there's a ridge there. I don't think I can fix this without messing it up even worse. Notice also that the spike on the front of his chest, you know that armor piece that covers the armpit that probably has a name that I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that spike on there, that still has extra resin on it that I hadn't noticed before I took the pics. Like I said, every time I look at this thing, there's something else. Actually, just as I'm recording this audio after the fact now, I notice another one on the shield. It's crazy. Anyway, if you look at it all put together like this, of course it's a great sculpt. I particularly like the relaxed pose with the axe just sort of casually held on the side, and it probably helps that I just love the juggernauts. There's also a ton of awesome detail, of course, but that brings me to the final complaint I have. I had to spend a lot of time looking at the official GW pictures just to figure out where to trim the pieces, and I noticed again and again that there's detail on this that either isn't as sharp as it should be, or that just doesn't exist. The neck guard is meant to have three spikes on it, for example, and the front one is basically an air bubble, and the two on the side are they're just not there, plain and simple. And there's other issues like that in other places. I think once it's all painted up and from the distance that you're actually going to be looking at it, the sharp detail that is there and the good overall impression the model makes because of the pose and the design, those are going to cancel out these smaller issues and it'll look good. But needless to say, I'm disappointed and I absolutely do not recommend that you buy one of these. 
It's a cool model and I kind of enjoyed the challenge of at least making it somewhat presentable, but there are just too many problems and I'm sorry, but the fact that it's resin doesn't excuse any of it. I have resin models from plenty of other companies that have none of these issues. Creature caster, obviously, but there are others as well, small companies with modest resources that can produce models just as small and detailed as this one that aren't complete train wrecks. Anyway, that's it for this one, folks. If you're wondering, that Zoids review I said I was going to do this week, that ain't gonna happen, because the kid in question is, uh, it sucks, and I don't care to fix it. So we'll check out that machine and Krieger build I've been yapping about next week, and then I should actually have more Zoids Wild stuff to show you guys soon. I do have a package on the way from Hobbylink Japan. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.